athletes David Lamana and Jack Brannigan. Coach will make an opening statement and then we'll go into questions for all three. Please raise your hand and we will call on you. Coach? These are exceptional guys. And when you have exceptional character and makeup and focus on what they're doing, um, you know, the baseball talent you, you could see firsthand. When you combine that, you know, I told them today, there's no team I've ever coached that's more built for this moment than, than these guys. Um, the versatility of the team, the unselfishness of the pitching staff, um, the way they engage in anything they feel like might need to be done to win a game, never seen anything like it. Um, today, we had a game plan going in and you know, obviously the base running was part of it and you guys were probably watching the game evolve and say how many outs are they going to make trying to steal bases and slide over the bag or not make a good slide. Not, I wondered the same thing. But they kept at it. Um, you know, the bunning game came into play. Um, they weren't perfect bunts, but it still kept things going. Um, and we kind of had that momentum. The at-bats, I guess, in the, uh, the seventh inning, Phenomenal. Um, I guess he was still in there, wasn't he? Into the yeah, he was still in there. Major league caliber arm. It's not easy to walk in and be on it right away. As much as we plan for it, um, it still takes a little time to kind of calibrate what that fastball feels like, what it's doing, and what the secondary pitches are like. And um, we talk a lot about the last hour on Sunday, whether it's practice. Well, really, it's usually the last three innings of the game. And I looked at that clock, um, and when Lamana hit that ball, it was 3.06. So that last hour, I just can't express how tough they are in the last hour of these games. Um, the execution, the performance, a freshman on the mound closing it out, to think that Jack Finley probably ever dreamed of he's going to close out four postseason games four, um, when I say unselfish, that's what I mean. That guy never asked to start, didn't care, just coach, let me pitch. And that's the philosophy of that staff. And, um, you know, Liam didn't quite get us where we wanted, but we had prepared this thing from the moment that the game started to use the bullpen how we thought. Protecting it yesterday, like I told you, gave you a better chance to have the outcome we got today. Can't say enough about the guys. Dave's, Dave's home run, um, and then the, the block and recover play. Exceptional play, tag, Miller back out there. You guys got a taste of what Miller can do. We need to put a leash on him that one time when the <laughs> he ran a third. But you see the savviness that I've talked about with how he plays, and you know, Brannigan's home run was huge. He almost, the other one wasn't fouled by a lot. Um, and then the double play to end it. You know, we work so hard on, on double play stuff because it really accentuates all different parts of what you have to do in the infield. And uh, for it to end that way just kind of was the cherry on top. We'll start with John and Tim. Lake, the, the way the game went yesterday and then you're down three to one well into the game today. What, but you've talked about the resiliency of the, this team all year. So what, what did you see from your guys in that time? What were the conversations like in the dugout? And then this is just your second full season. How do you put into words making it to Omaha really in year two? Um, I thought we had an Omaha team in 2020. I thought we had an Omaha team last year. And we have one this year. And it wasn't an easy pathway to get there. Um, in this environment, in this stadium, against a team that is that dangerous, that team is exceptional. We beat them. We just had to win a three-game series. Now, what they've done the whole year, you guys probably know better than I how, how somebody's run through the SEC in that fashion. Um, but you have to be able to absorb some jabs. We talked about this as a kind of a boxing match a little bit. And um, you can take a few jabs. But you can't allow the knockout blow. Three to one's okay. Eight to one's tough. So they delivered some knockout blows, but we hung in there. And we knew that we had to eventually jab, and we did. And then we delivered some blows. And we just kept running Finley back out there. And the defensive play um, in this series 
was remarkable, like how well it was executed, really all over the place. Some of the plays, Cote, Putts, Dave, Brannigan, Preisner, Miller, Myers, whoever was in left field. You saw our team play, and I'm glad that the nation got to watch that. That was, that was high level baseball. Late Coach Patel's beating himself up for not having a quick enough hook today. You were the you were the opposite of that. Did you go in with with that plan? Ryan McClinsky, who is injured, who was our closer, right? He's our bullpen coordinator. So he's down there. And before the game, I said, this is what we have to be ready for, and you have to be ready for it from pitch one. I hope that doesn't happen, but you have to be on it from the moment this thing starts. And Rayo and Finley have to be kind of at what we call level one, like where that's mentally totally engaged in what's going on, where they are in the lineup, getting their, their arms like loose, their band work, the things they do before they throw. We did it right out of the gate. Um, I mean, Burns was throwing great. I, so, but every decision you make, I, I felt that way a little bit yesterday, to be honest. And when you're playing games of this magnitude, every decision is magnified. Um, and if it doesn't go the way you had thought it would, you feel um, responsible for it. And I felt that way a little bit yesterday. And but these guys, these guys answered. The guy was pitching really good. They just finally kind of figured it out and. Um, we were ready from pitch one for our pen. For, for you two guys, you had two hits for six innings, and you had six or eight hits in the last three innings. Uh, I, was it? I mean, I, it was a change of mindset, or was it just what what you got? Uh, like Coach Sherrod said, it's the last hour on Sunday. We came in the dugout in the top of the seventh, and we were talking about last hour on Sunday. We've talked about it basically since Coach Sherrod's been here, and, and we knew that the last three innings were going to be ours, and. Carter got it going with the double, and, and when Zisco was up to the plate, Dave came up to me and he said, just take a deep breath, we're winning this game right here. And then he delivered the home run, and I just put a good swing on it and kind of blacked out from there. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with Brandy. We always talk, we've been talking about the last hour on Sunday since our first Sunday practice with Coach Jarrett, and uh, it all kind of culminated and came together today. And we strung some good at-bats together um, after we got into the game. And, um, I mean, I'm just happy I don't have to save, shave the mustache. So. <laughs> I wonder what you were thinking when you hit the ball down the right field line. And seeing that cutout, I'm sure that wasn't in your head <laughs> before you made contact with it. But that little cutout certainly didn't hurt. No, absolutely not. I mean, I hit it. And, you know, I, I've known that it's a, a short porch over there. And, and when I saw it disappear, I was ecstatic. Coach, um, 20 year reunion here. Um, I just, you know, I didn't put that into words. It kind of just. The neat thing is, those guys came back this year. I think it was the first time they were back together on campus. So I think it was uh, the Boston College game. We had a little ceremony for him. And Coach Maneri is a good friend of mine. His, his son was our academic advisor for my first two years. Remarkable baseball family. Um, to have those guys there, uh, it meant a lot to me. And. The comments on our players, it means a lot when it's coming from your own alumni base of how much they enjoy watching what these guys are able to do. So it meant a lot to think that, okay, 20 years, we're going, um, meant to be. Coach Maneri talked me through what it was like to coach at Notre Dame with some of the distinctions that we have with the academic demand these guys have and the travel and the you know indoor preseason practice. And I kind of looked at it as a positive um, and how you make those indoor workouts and all the things we talked about. Like it, it kind of came together and you, and you guys got to, got to watch it. So really cool. I mean, that, that type of stuff is fairy tale stuff. I see Jack and David, they changed hats, but you haven't changed hats yet. Is this a job, a model approach job not finished or you know, what's, what's going on? <laughs> well, I gave them to my wife, um, and it's just, just as Gatorade covered. I didn't really want that to get Gatorade. So I just, I don't know, I just kept this hat on. And I, the feeling of, like, almost calmness and gratitude, I didn't know how I would feel. I knew how I felt as a player three times, but um, that calmness of feeling this for them, that they did it, I'll never forget that and hugging Brandon out there just um, but I, I didn't even think somebody handed me hats I took them to my wife I 
we do have unfinished business, but uh, this hat's fine. And uh, Brandon, you, uh, when you came in, you kind of pointed something out to David on the stat sheet. You talked about number five there. What's, what, what exactly were you uh, pretty uh, shocked about, I guess? I was surprised that Jack Finley threw five innings and only gave up one hit against probably the best offensive team in the country. Uh, we've seen it all year, and I'm just so impressed with the work that he did. I didn't know it was five innings. I, I remember when he first came in, I was thinking, all right, who's next? You know, we'll get a couple innings out of Finley, and then who's going to finish it? And he just took it, took it and ran with it. So I'm, I'm just so impressed with Finley, and I didn't realize it was that many innings. So that's kind of what I pointed out to Dave. I was just shocked, and I'm just so proud of the whole team. To the back. That was literally my question. Okay. Uh, coach, last year you guys dropped in the Super Regionals the way Tony in, in Tennessee did this year. Do you have any advice on how to handle things for Tennessee? <laughs> I mean, I, not, no, I, I don't. I mean, I, I see a just extremely talented team. Like that whole lineup, I think you could almost, you could pull it out of a hat and draw the lineup up. They're so deep and talented and physical, and they can run and they defend and the the, the arms that they're running at you. I, my advice is just keep it up like that you you can't build a better machine than what it appears we were facing um, and I wanted our guys to feel the reality of you don't have to beat that machine and what they did this season you have to win two of the three games that you're playing so um, that's how we looked at it how they looked at it I, I don't know he clearly has this thing in an exceptional position with the, the players and the way they're coached. They're well they're just a they're a well coached, talented, talented team. John. Two quick questions for, for Jack and David. Um, you guys are veterans that have been through a lot. You've been through the transition to Link, so how do you put into words or what does it mean to you to, to be a part of the group that gets Notre Dame back to the College World Series for the first time in twenty years? I mean this means absolutely everything to me. Since I stepped on campus since I even committed here, uh, my goal was to come to Omaha. And, you know, we got close last year. But uh, to put it all together this year and make it to Omaha, uh, it just re it really means means a lot. Exactly what Dave said. It's just a dream come true. Um, I remember when I first committed to Notre Dame, there were people who uh, actually said to me that, you know, you better hope you win a ring in high school because you're never going to win one in college. And that's just the kind of program that it was. And, and I'm just so proud to be part of the team that rebuilt it. And, uh, my roommate is Zach Preisner, shortstop. He actually said something to me this morning. He said, if we win this game, we're going to be legends. So that kind of stuck with me, and that last out just kind of was so special. And, and then following up both for you guys again, um, midweek Ryan Cole said, was asked a question. He said, well, I think maybe they should be a little bit afraid of us. You know, we're kind of a dangerous team. It seemed like you guys maybe played with an extra edge this weekend. And is that so? And if so, what did that do for you? And what did Ryan's statement do for you? Well, I don't know if it was so much what Ryan said, but, I mean, we all have social media, and, and we've seen Tennessee all over our social media all year. And, uh, I, I mean, I think as soon as the bracket was announced, it was Tennessee or the field. And, and I think that, you know, going up against the number one team in the country like that just kind of gives you that extra edge. And uh, we were so close last year, and, and we didn't want to have that same feeling this year. So I think that that's the edge that you saw that we played with this weekend. Same thing as Jack. I mean, last year um, we were heartbroken on Sunday on the Super Regional, and we didn't want to repeat that this year. So even waking up this morning, we had a little edge going, and, and we had a chip on our shoulder, and we were ready to go. Were you aware of Cole's statement earlier in the week, or does that matter to you? I caught wind of it, <laughs> and I, I want these guys to be honest and not create a firestorm of controversy in what they say, but that's fine. Like, I want those guys to explain what they're thinking and, and how they feel about this. And um, this group's gone to some tough, tough, tough places. You guys have seen our schedule. This is trip number what? 12. This is our 12th trip. I mean, I don't know how many. I'm just, this is reality. Like, I, and I've coached in the SEC. You're really not going to travel that much outside of your league. This is our 12th trip. Miami, Minneapolis, Tallahassee, Raleigh, Louisville. Statesboro, Knoxville. I don't know who else had to do that, but I would venture to say few, if any. Um, so if those guys that have been through that want to talk to you guys and explain what they think, I want them to. Go speak your mind honestly and 
he was right. Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.